When I was in the thick of my engineering job, my burnout symptoms were so bad they drove me to the point of quitting. But even after I was out of my corporate job, the burnout symptoms still continued. Although the core cause was gone, I still had to work for months to heal the damage that had been done. Today we're going to talk about the number one thing that caused my burnout, a few hidden causes of burnout that may surprise you, and how I ultimately cured my burnout and finally healed. So I'm not going to make you guys wait. The number one cause of my burnout was unaligned actions. My nine to five job was not aligned with who I was, the tasks I was doing on a daily basis, the people I was spending my time with and the environment I had to work in did not fit well with me as a person. If you're unsure exactly what the reasons for your burnout is, then you should ask yourself these questions. Number one, what tasks at work cause you the most stress and seem to contribute the most to your burnout? Burnout. Number two, is there anything in your environment at work that seems to contribute to your burnout and cause extra stress as well? Number three, are there any specific people you work with that seem to drain your energy and cause you more stress and anxiety? If you answered yes to any of these three questions and you have a list of things that are causing your burnout and it's clear to you that it's not the entire job as a whole, it's just a few key aspects of the job, then I suggest you sit down and have a conversation with your boss and try to see if if you can change some of these things about your job before you ultimately decide to quit. But if you answer these questions and it seems like every single aspect of your job or your career path is causing and contributing to your burnout, then it might be time for you to leave. Either way, whether you leave or you stay, there are a few hidden causes that you may not know are contributing to your burnout and making it that much worse. So next I'm gonna talk about those two hidden causes and how I specifically made changes in my life to cure them and heal my burnout post leaving my job. The first one is related to caffeine. So if you're burnt out, I would bet my life that you're probably drinking a lot of caffeine to stay energized throughout the day. But the thing about caffeine is it causes increase in the cortisol levels in your body, which contributes to higher stress and anxiety. So if you are burnt out in your job, counterintuitively, you really should be drinking less caffeine. One thing that was extremely helpful for me was to cut my caffeine intake down to one cup per day, as well as introduce a few supplements into my daily diet. The two supplements that helped me the most were L-theanine and ashwagandha. These are both natural supplements that are known to help with stress and anxiety as well as increase focus and productivity, which brings me right into today's sponsor, which is Magic Mind. Magic Mind is a shot of matcha that includes multiple supplements that are all natural and help you to increase productivity and fight off procrastination, brain fog, and fatigue. And the packaging is so cute and who does not love cute packaging. Personally for me I've noticed that it increases my productivity without affecting my sleep at night which we'll talk about in a minute. It helps me focus on my work without feeling that jittery anxious vibes that I get when I drink too much coffee. It doesn't cause a caffeine crash a few hours after taking it and if I actually drink it right after my morning coffee I don't even get a caffeine crash from my coffee either. And it tastes amazing. It's basically pre-made matcha that I personally I like to mix with a cup of iced milk and make a super quick and easy matcha latte. I literally put iced milk and then shake that shot up, pour it in the top, and I'm good to go. It's already pre-sweetened with natural ingredients such as stevia, which keeps it extremely low calorie and extremely healthy. Some of the all-natural ingredients that Magic Mind includes are that L-theanine and the ashwagandha that I talked about, as well as turmeric and lion's mane mushrooms, which are all supplements that I personally know are extremely helpful to decrease stress, decrease inflammation, and on the flip side, boost your blood flow, which helps with focus and increase brain power. Long story short, it's basically magic liquid in a tiny shot that you can just quickly take. You don't even have to mix it with milk if you don't want to. You can actually just take it like a juice shot and swing it back in one gulp and you're good to go. So if you're interested in trying out Magic Mind, then head down in the description box below to click my link and receive 20% off your purchase using my my code page 20. One of the reasons why I love this company so much is because the founder James actually had a very similar story to mine except a little bit more intense where he was in the ER for too much caffeine, too much stress, and basically burnout and he ultimately decided that he had to make a change which inspired him to create Magic Mind to replace his daily coffee intake and cut down his caffeine by drastic levels while still being able to be extremely productive and get everything done 
done that he needed to in the day. Honestly, after using Magic Mind for two weeks, I found that it's literally a burnout cure. It includes all of the things that I used personally to help heal and cure my burnout, plus tons more that I would not have been able to access on my own. It's also the perfect coffee substitute because again, like I said, caffeine really contributes to increased levels of burnout and stress. So if you're having a hard time quitting caffeine, then I definitely suggest subbing in Magic Mind in the meantime while you work to decrease your caffeine levels. So back to curing burnout, being able to decrease my caffeine to just one cup of coffee per day helped me to decrease my stress levels, my anxiety levels. It toned down my extremely rapid heart racing that I would get during the day when I was stressed. And most importantly, it helped to heal the second hidden cause of burnout, which is sleep. This is like a vicious cycle that happens to probably almost everyone, but especially me. The more caffeine and coffee I would drink during the day, the less I would be able to sleep at night, which obviously logically makes sense. But once you get into this mindset of burnout and you're in this loop in this cycle, it's almost impossible to get out of it and get back to a place where you're able to sleep a good amount each night, wake up each day, maybe drink one cup of coffee and get your work done the entire day without anything else. So the second hidden cause is getting the correct amount of sleep that you need for your body. Now, the way I suggest you do this is to first start by, again, cutting out all the excess caffeine so you can see how much your body actually needs to sleep. If you're still in your nine to five job, I suggest you take the weekend to allow yourself to sleep as much as you possibly need to, to catch up on any missed sleep that you might have a deficit in from the past few months, and then set a bedtime that you stick to religiously and start going to bed at the exact same time every single night. At first, you'll find that you'll probably sleep in the next few days because you're probably extremely sleep deprived. And if you're not in your nine to five anymore and you have the ability, then I suggest you just take a week to allow your body to recover from burnout and sleep in as much as you need to. That's personally what I did. And I found that I was extremely sleep deprived from my nine to five job. Get to that eight to nine hours and figure out what that key number is for you. For me, it's exactly eight and a half hours. For my REM cycles, that seems to be the key number where if I wake up after eight and a half hours, I feel refreshed and productive productive the entire day. And a key note here is if you've been taking any supplements to help you sleep, whether over-the-counter medications like sleep aids or things like melatonin, then I suggest you stop taking those and start getting to a point where you can naturally sleep on your own. A lot of times the reason that you need those supplements and those sleeping pills like I did is because you're drinking too much caffeine and your body is too hyped up to be able to calm down to go to sleep. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say that I never take sleeping pills now, but what used to be one one to two sleeping pills every single night is now one sleeping pill every few nights. Sometimes I go weeks in a row with none. It really just depends on what my sleep environment is like. If I'm in my normal sleep environment with my own bed and everything is too routine, then I no longer need any sleeping pills to get a good restful night's sleep, which is honestly mind blowing to me because I literally was taking sleeping pills like every single night during my nine to five job. Also, I know there's other substances that people use to fall asleep. I won't talk about them because I know we all know what they are. A big one is alcohol, but of course there's others. I'm not trying to get any issues on my YouTube channel, so I'm just going to stop there because I don't really know what the guidelines are to talk about these things. Just so you know, there's studies that have been done on all of these ways to get better sleep, and all of the studies show a decrease in REM sleep whenever you're using any of these substances to get better sleep. And a decrease in REM sleep means less restful sleep, which leaves you feeling tired during the day, even if you slept more than you usually do. That was the case with me. I would take a sleep sleeping pill, get for sure my eight or nine hours of sleep, but I still felt exhausted the next day and needed to drink two to three cups of coffee, sometimes even four, to get through my work day and actually get stuff done. So just know that caffeine plus sleeping pills or any type of substance that gets you to sleep is the worst combination. And you're literally putting yourself in a loop of burnout and stress because you're not getting the required amount of sleep you need, which is just going to make your burnout worse. The other thing relating to sleep that I did that healed my burnout is I allowed myself a morning routine that gave myself space to actually wake up and get ready for the day and be mentally prepared before I went into work or started working on my own side business. If you are waking up, rolling out of bed, making a coffee and sitting at your desk to do a meeting, then I promise you, you are contributing to your burnout. You need to give your brain the space to wake up and feel like you have a life outside of your job. Even if you're working the most passionate job that you love, and you've been working towards for years, it's very possible that you'll get to a level of burnout if you don't set those boundaries for yourself and allow yourself 
workspace before work to be a person and not just a nine to five employee. That brings me right into the last way that I cured my burnout, which is what I like to call aligned actions. So at the beginning of the video, I talked about the number one cause of my burnout, which was unaligned actions. But now I'm going to talk about the reverse of that, which is figuring out what actions align with you and your work style. And this is something that a personality test can't tell you, a mentor can't tell you. A lot of people don't even know the answer for themselves until they actually go out and try different jobs, different career paths, different majors, whatever it is, to figure out what it is that aligns with you. And the key is here to not just try these things out, but to actually reflect on your experiences while working these jobs and doing these majors to figure out the key components that seem to resonate the most with you. So then you can look back, look across all the different things you've done, look at your notes and say, these are the things that stick out most to me, that light me up, that bring me joy. What can I do that allows the largest combination of those key tasks that feel aligned to me as a person? Something that I realized through the process of quitting my nine to five job is the way I viewed my life values had changed drastically since I initially picked my major in college four years ago. When I first started out trying to decide what I wanted to do with my life, I was focused on a way that I could have a stable job, which I now realize doesn't mean anything, as well as a high paying job that could allow me to support my nephew once I graduated college. I also wanted a job with good benefits so that I felt stable, I had good health insurance, I had a retirement package, life insurance policy, all of these things to, again, feel stable in my job and be able to support those in my family that needed my support. But my life changed, my family's needs changed, and I realized that this job really didn't align with me anymore. The values that I once held so tightly now were things that I didn't need to focus on anymore, as well as realizing that this nine to five job was not the answer to stability and being able to support my family. I realized that there was other ways that I was going to be able to support my family that would overall in the long term really be the most beneficial, as well as the possibility to have a job that not only supports my family, but also supports me, my mental health, and lets me pursue my passions, which is overall what led me to decide it was okay to quit my job and pursue my own path. Quick antidote for those of you who don't know, one of my older sisters is in prison and has been for the past five years of my life. She has about five years left to go. And as most people know, it's really hard to find a job if you have a record. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail about my sister's record or anything like that, but something that has always been on my heart is that I want to be able to help my sister by providing her with a job when she gets out. And the only way I can do that is if I have my own company that actually is at the point where it needs employees and I can hire her to help me. On top of that, something I would love to be able to do is support my mom financially by, again, giving her a job for a company that I build up. She has a background in accounting and she's been doing it her entire life, so I know she would be an amazing asset to my future business. And if I can get my business to a point where I need someone to handle all of our finances, then I would be able to give her a job that is a lot less stressful for her, allows her to work from home, and is with her family, which I know she would love to do. And Lastly, starting my own business allows me, number one, the flexibility to pick the things that I want to work on in the future, as well as the schedule flexibility to have children and be able to work from home and work a flexible schedule so I can be at home with my kids once I have them. These are all things that I would never have been able to get out of a normal corporate nine to five job. And if these are values that are also important to you in your career, then it's definitely something to consider going forward. If you're unsure what those values look like for you, what parts of your job you enjoy, and you need a little bit of help being able to reflect on your current job and see what things you want to keep and what things you want to let go of, then I suggest you go watch this video where I talk about the eight top categories of your career that you may be the most passionate about, as well as some suggestions of how to get the most out of your job and be able to tap into those key interests and passions right now. But that is all I have for you guys in today's video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description to get 20% off your first purchase of Magic Mind. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.